you know about this thing called mid-engine racing? Because this guy invented it. He is the man, the myth, the John Cooper. It's 1923. John Cooper was born, and his father already introduced him to the world of motorsport. After all, his father was a racing mechanic. Unfortunately, Cooper could not get involved in racing yet because there was this annoying thing called World War II that got in the way. And after World War II, he and his friend founded the Cooper Car Company which produced racing cars out of old World War II parts. And then, he had a breakthrough. Although he didn't realize it, his new mid-engine location would be the foundation for every single race car for the next hundred years. Yes, he created the Cooper T-51. The first mid-engine Formula 1 car. More out of practicality than innovation. He wanted to get rid of this big cast iron lump in the front of his Formula 1 car. So he thought, what if I put it behind the driver? But then I'll have to move the, the axle. So he did. Meaning it was a engine behind the driver, but ahead of the rear axle. That was a world first. And the team operated out of a shed in England. <laughs> Despite that, their mid-engine Formula 1 car won its first race in 1957 and came third in the Manufacturer Championship just a year later. But, with the help of Sterling Moss and Jack Brown, ever heard of them? C Cooper won the Drivers' Championship and the Manufacturers' Championship two times in a row, from 1959 to 1960. Well done, guys. Well done. Unfortunately, in 1961 and beyond, Ferrari had, and Lotus had already begun working on mid-engine cars, and the team out of a shed knew they couldn't keep up with the spending. Luckily, there was another alternative from Austin Rover. Austin released their Mini in 1960 and competed in the Monte Carlo Rally a year later, but it broke down and crashed. And it was never gonna stand the hope of winning with 35 horsepower. But, John Cooper saw it a different way. He saw it as potential to move forward, so he did. The Austin Corporation bought an entire airfield in England just to test the new Mini Cooper S. He doubled the horsepower, tuned the suspension, and increased the braking, so this 1,400-pound car now made 75 horsepower. And from 1964 to 1967, it won Monte Carlo Rally in 1964, 1965, 1966 until it was disqualified for a headlight filament. Yeah, mm-hmm. Headlight filament. There we go. And 1967. Now I can disqualify that time. So, you know, you win four times, you get 12, you get disqualified for shenanigans. Once, that's not bad. And that was all we ever heard of the Cooper. He retired shortly thereafter and died in the year 2000. It was a sad loss. But, that was not the end of the Cooper name. When BMW bought Mini in 2001, they started designing the new Mini Cooper S, which, in 20, which was first sold in 2002, and nowadays, in 2019, it has a turbocharged inline four, producing 190 horsepower and 207 torque. Yeah. This thing does zero to 60 in under six and a half seconds with front wheel drive. But if that's not enough for you, 
There's the 2019 John Cooper Works. What's his full name on it? With 228 horsepower and 236 torque. This thing has a top speed of over 150 and a 0 to 60 in less than 6 seconds. But, if you want the ultimate mini, you have to get the John Cooper Works GP. Now, this one is a very limited edition version, but it's been around for 16 years now. In 2003, they, had, they upgraded the Cooper S to the John Cooper Works GP with 200 horsepower, a better ECU, lighter exhaust, and in 2013, it got another upgrade. Adjustable suspension. Actual workable aerodynamics, including downforce, splitters, wings, and diffusers. It had 215 horsepower. It weighed just over two and a half, 2,500 pounds. And it, and this, just because of all of this very high-tech performance, it did an 8-minute and 23-second lap around the Nürburgring. That's pretty darn good. But, if you want, but coming out next year is the ultimate John Cooper Works GP with 300 horsepower, more aggressive arrow, bigger brakes, a proper diffuser this time, and a goal. Beat an 8 minute 23 second lap at the Nürburgring. They're not going after the Honda Civic's lap because that would be silly. A Honda Civic isn't a Mini, so why bother? Now if you think that's the only thing John Cooper Works has been involved with at Mini, you're wrong as well. The Countryman. This thing has 220 horsepower and 260 torque, and thanks to its all-wheel drive system, it does 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. And it's been involved in just as much motorsport as the original Mini 50 years ago. It's competed in the World Rally Championship, and it won the Tour de Corsa Rally in 2012. But the most brutal countryman ever was the World Rally Cross countryman. This all-wheel drive, 600 horsepower rally cross car in 0 to 60 in 1.8 seconds. And while both of those cars, the rally cross and the rallying, were a welcome return to Mini's rallying careers, they didn't really do that well in competition, but there was one rally, the toughest rally of them all, where the mini countryman from John Cooper Works shined. Dakar, the most extreme endurance race on earth, traveling across the South American deserts and rock faces and canyons. And of course, the X-Ray Cooper Works Dakar, all four Mini, had 320 horsepower. And did I mention, it was one of the most successful rally cars ever, winning non-stop 100% completion rate, aka every single car they put in finished the race from 2012 to 2015. Yeah. In the toughest endurance off-road race of all time, the Mini X-Raid competed four times, won four times, and broke down zero times. That's pretty good. Including a podium sweep in 2014. You know, not bad, claiming first, second, and third place, respectively. And now, they're back. After a difficult year in 2016-2017, where they only got a highest of seconds, they're back and competing with two separate teams, Cooper Works and X-Raid, looking to claim Dakar title. John Cooper may have died 19 years ago, but his legacy of British innovation, legendary success, 
and sheer genius shall forever live on in the minis that he helped create.